This is Dropped Among This Crowd, a podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Umphreys McGee. Each week will feature a rotating schedule of insightful full show recaps, interviews with fellow Umphreaks, members of Team UM, as well as other musicians who have been inspired by and or played with the band. This is your place for all the latest news and happenings within the world of Umphreys, helping keep you informed on what's been recently released or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah Jahimiak. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week's episode of Dropped Among This Crowd. I hope you're able to check out last week's episode where I chatted with writer, producer, and director of the soon-to-be-released horror film The Canyonlands, Brendan Devane. I want to thank him again so much for his time. It was so fun chatting with him and learning more about his idea for the film, how it all came together, working with Brennan and Jake, and so much more. There is a link in the show notes where you can listen to that full episode if you haven't checked that out yet. Before we dive in, I want to share with you an amazing offer exclusively for my listeners from audible.com. Audible.com allows you to choose from thousands of audiobook titles to download that you can listen to offline anytime, anywhere. The app is free to download and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. And something I thought was awesome, you can listen across devices without losing your spot. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and personal development. Every month, members receive one credit to pick any title from a number of genres and subjects, two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, as well as guided meditation programs. Also, if you can't decide what you want to listen to, don't worry. You can keep your monthly credits for up to a year and use them to binge on a whole series later if you'd like. I personally love reading personal development books and biographies about musicians, which I'm sure is not a surprise to hear. I've listened to some really great ones using Audible. A few that I loved were The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins, Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis, You Are a Badass by Jen Sinchiro, and some incredible biographies like The Dirt, The Motley Crue Story, Gold Dust Woman about Stevie Nicks, and Life by Keith Richards, which was absolutely phenomenal, and I seriously recommend that book to every music fan that I know. No matter what your favorite genre, Audible has something you'll enjoy. Head to audibletrial.com slash dropped among this crowd and you'll receive a 30 day free trial of Audible and a free audiobook of your choice. A perfect way to snag that book you've been meaning to check out. That's audibletrial.com slash D R O P P E D A M O N G T H I S C R O W D for your free 30 day trial of Audible and free audiobook. Want to pass along this quick bit of information to you guys. The band's shows that were scheduled for May 29th and 30th at the Coca-Cola Roxy in Atlanta, Georgia, have been rescheduled for May 21st and 22nd, 2021. All tickets already purchased will be honored at the new dates next year. According to the official statement released by the band, if you have any questions, reach out to the point of sale. Another interview for you guys coming this week. I had the pleasure of talking with fellow ump freak, dad, husband, and founder of the sober fans group, Much Oblige, Benji Rosenswag. Benji and I talk about how social distancing has been going for his family of four, the origins of the yellow balloons, the purpose and mission of starting Much Obliged, and he also shares some really great recommendations for Much Listens and more. 
and this was also video recorded. So if you're interested in watching the chat with Benji and I, you can head over to the show's YouTube page and check it out there. Make sure you subscribe when you're there. And you can also head over to my personal Instagram and watch it on my IGTV. The link for both can be found in the show notes. Are you trying to find a place to get the word out about your shirts, pins, jewelry, interesting trinkets, band that's going on tour, or small business that's looking to connect with some like-minded folks? Dropped Among This Crowd pod would love to help, including ad time in the show, ticket giveaways, social media plugs, product reviews, and more. Dropped Among This Crowd can help you reach and be seen by tons of fellow umfreaks, musicians, and other kind folks looking to purchase from you, work with you, and support their fellow um family. Email droppedamongthiscrowdpod at gmail.com if you're interested in chatting more. So here is my chat with fellow um freak Benji Rosenswag. Enjoy. Introduce yourself to everybody. Also, because I would really like you to say your last name for me so I get it right. <laughs> um Tell everybody uh, where you live and a little bit about uh, your life, your family, stuff like that. Sure. So my name is Benji Rosenzweig. Um, I live in Detroit. I've been here since 2004. Uh, before that, uh, I was an East Coast guy. I lived in uh, Virginia, uh, D.C., Baltimore, and most recently New York. Um, and that's where I spent uh, the majority of my formative years. Uh, my first Umphreys McGee show was actually Mo Down of 2003. Um, uh, Hell of a Night started with Miss Tinkles, and uh, I was hooked pretty much uh, from there. And um, I've got uh, two kids. I've got a daughter, Nama, who's 10, and I've got a daughter, Ella, who's 9. Um, they're not Irish twins, but they're pretty damn close. They're about 15 months apart. And I'm married. My wife, Sarah, uh, is an awesome wife and an awesome mother. And, uh, yeah, I'm a huge Humphreys McGee fan, live music fan in general. Um, and, uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So how is, uh, social distancing going for your family right now? Uh, so my younger daughter, Ella has special needs. Uh, she's got a, uh, something called cough and Cyrus syndrome. So as soon as this started and they were talking about medically fragile people, I'm like, that's my family, uh, medically fragile kind of defines, uh, her. So, uh, no, it doesn't define her, but it's an attribute. Right. Um, and so most of Michigan started, um, you know, quarantine or social distancing and all that uh, about 10 days ago and we started about 22 days ago so today is april 2nd and we started on march 12th so we've been <laughs> we've been locked yeah. up for uh for a little over three weeks so yeah same um, for us yeah yeah so we've been we've been we've been keeping it tight here uh but we're we're making it work. Uh, we got lots of fun activities and between work and school and play, you know, we're having, we're having fun. We're making it happen. Yeah. It's so. amazing how, uh, how time has really kind of, you know, it, you're finding ways to really find, to fill the day. Yeah. You know, there's at the end of the day, I'm like, you know, we, we still were able to, you know, between school and work and spending time together, you're still not really, having a lot of downtime, I guess, with, with kids is <laughs> probably the biggest reason they're keeping us busy for sure. Yeah. And, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I've played more guitar in the last three weeks than I have in the last three years. Um, and luckily we've uh, gotten very comfortable uh, focusing on songs that my kids like. So uh, I'm learning less Humphreys and Fish songs and more Lizzo, um, which <laughs> is interesting. <laughs> yeah. That was that was interesting the other day. So. <laughs> I'm sure it was. It's how it is with my nine year old. She likes all this other music, and I'm like, okay. yeah. <laughs> and, and learning the songs and being like, I'm not going to sing that lyric to you. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so. that's that's where the real creativity has to come in like on the spot ad-libbing you know exactly <laughs> exactly so i'm 
what rhymes with shit? Um, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, it's, it's been interesting. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure for sure. So I see your, um, the mantras that you do daily with your oldest daughter. It started on the way to school, but now you're still doing them at home. Talk about that. Talk about why you started doing those with her and what, how you've seen it up improve her, her mindset and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a great question. So um, my daughter, Nama, who's uh, in fifth grade now, switched schools uh, for first grade. So she went to a different kindergarten. And on the driving to school on the first day of first grade, she was like, uh, you know, concerned, worried, you know, having all the anxiety that kids have on the first day of school. And uh, I had seen a guy on the internet doing some mantras with his daughter and i was like i was ad-libbing i was winging it and i was like let's let's do some mantras and just get you in the the mindset of you know i can do whatever i need to do and uh it just became a thing that we did every morning on the way to school and at the beginning of this school year um somebody had asked me about it and so i recorded it and did it as a instagram story um and a bunch of people responded were like hey those are awesome can you uh can you send me a screenshot of like the text that you use um and it just became a thing that we do every morning on the, on the way to school we uh do these mantras and uh we i post them on my instagram stories and uh it's pretty cool a few like we got introduced to a teacher in new york who does this with her class every day uh, and a few parents around the world who also do it every day and sometimes they post it and tag me and um, you know it's it's great for my daughter it's hard raising girls I mean you know mm -hmm. uh, I was never one but I hung out with a lot of them in in school um, mm -hmm. and it's hard it's hard being a 10 year old girl today um, mm -hmm. and so the mantras are pretty simple it's I am strong I'm smart I'm beautiful uh, I can do anything I set my mind to. Nothing in this world can stop me but me. My mom loves me. My dad loves me. My sister loves me. Uh, my aunts and uncles, my aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents love me. Um, my goal isn't to be the. My goal isn't to be perfect. My goal is to be better than I was yesterday. Um, and today, in this current situation, we've added. I'm healthy and I'm following the quarantine protocols. And it's just basically I'm I'm taking care of myself and uh, everything I got everything I, I that I need is I have, um, and I wish I could tell you that it's just there to build my daughter up, but it's a great way for me to start my day every day because you know I'm in sales and sometimes days are good and sometimes days are bad and sometimes I feel like I got kicked in the teeth and it's not a bad way to start my day before I go into a meeting telling myself that I'm strong and I'm smart and I'm beautiful. So <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Those are things everybody, you know, needs to tell themselves yeah. every day. That's so awesome. So how are they like handling everything and, and with not being able to see their friends and do their regular activities? How is that going for them? Um, some days are good. Some days are bad. Um, you know, we've got, quite a bit of cabin fever here. Um, you know, we're very, very lucky. Um, we have a really cool playscape in our backyard. So we've got a slide and swings and monkey bars and stuff like that. So we get outside almost every day. Some days, you know, it's been cold and rainy a couple of days. Um, but for the most part, you know, we spend an hour or two outside every day. Um, and as far as seeing their friends, there's some kids in the neighborhood that my daughter's friends with and we can you know wave across the street uh and her friends from school i mean we've got technology zoom mm -hmm. just like we're doing now and mm -hmm. so she's got her classroom that she participates in every day uh or every school day and uh, she's seeing her friends and it, it's pretty crazy um i've spent more time talking to my friends uh who are in different parts of the world in the last three weeks and I generally do just because we're checking in on each other and we're making sure that everybody's mm -hmm. okay. And, um, you know, so my sisters are FaceTiming with my daughters almost every day. And, you know, we're, there's, I, I was telling Nama that, you know, this is not social isolation, this is social distancing. So we're mm -hmm. staying physically far away from people, but we're actually more connected right now. 
Absolutely. That's very true. I feel the exact same way. Um, you know, reaching out to people and talking to people that, you know, if it were a normal Friday, uh, you know, normal Friday, you know, you wouldn't think to text that person or, you know, whatever. So it's in a weird way, it's kind of nice. I don't know. It's, it's weird, but you're absolutely right. So let's switch gears. And why don't you tell everybody and myself included uh, a little more about the origins of the yellow balloons? Yeah. So um, before we talk about the origins of the yellow balloons, let me just explain what the yellow balloons are. So um, yellow balloons are a group of sober music fans. Um, probably the most notoriety or the most well-known are the Wharf Rats, and the Wharf Rats are a group of sober um, Grateful Dead fans. And like with any, you know, uh, situation, there's a little bit of a conflict of when was the first Wharf Rats table, when was the first Wharf Rats meeting, but essentially in the middle of 1986, a couple of guys who were on tour uh, who were in AA and NA were trying to connect with people because, you know, if you're if you're sober, uh, concerts can be a slippery environment. And so um, a couple of guys got together and connected uh, and said, hey, let's let's meet up and essentially had a little AA meeting, not sanctioned, but a little, you know, recovery meeting um, at set break. And by the end of that year, it was an official thing. Um, where the Wharf Rats were a group of sanctioned sober fans who got together. They had a table um, and people were able to connect and, and understand. And it really was a slow progress um, of um, kind of attraction rather than, than promotion and saying, we're here. This is a resource. If you're in the same boat, you know, you can come to us and be there. Um, you have probably seen stickers that look like this, uh, mm -hmm. or pins that look like that. And the one show at a time is a slogan, uh, from the, uh, recovery one day at a time. Uh, and it's supposed to be catchy and, you know, uh, and it's effective. So, uh, yeah, it started in 86 with the Wharf Rats in 1996. Again, there's like, when was the official first meeting? So, um, uh, Halloween of 1996 when Fish did the Talking Heads uh, cover, which is one of the greatest shows, uh, in my opinion, um, was the first unofficial fellowship meeting, and that's fellowship with a PH, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so that started in, uh, in 96 at Halloween. Uh, it wasn't officially sanctioned by the band until uh, the following tour. So the winner of, you know, 96 going into 97, um, that's when the fellowship was official. Uh, and then, you know, in the late 90s, um, you, you started getting Mo and the Disco Biscuits and, you know, Humphreys. Uh, but really in like the early 2000s is when those you know, the Happy Hour Hero started for the Mo fans and the Digital Buddha started for the uh, Disco Biscuits fan and the Jellyfish started for the String Cheese fans. And, you know, there's probably, I'm going to make up a number, 80% overlap, right? So I am a member of all those groups um, and, uh, you know, identify as such. Um, it was early... 2009 it was probably late 2008 uh when a conversation started around uh having a group for um Humphreys and McGee and um you know there was a there was a lot of talk about what that looks like and how do we start a new group um you know at the time there was social media around but it wasn't as prevalent we were still using Yahoo groups uh, to communicate around the country. Um, but February 5th of 2010, uh, is when the first official much obliged table happened. Um, and that was at the war Memorial in, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And so we just had our 10 year anniversary. Um, we have tables at most shows, not every show. Um, usually it's, 
every every big show will have a table. Sometimes either the venue's too small, um, and so there's not room, or sometimes we're in a city where there's just not a, a large sober presence, and so uh, we'll have trouble finding a table host. Uh, but the majority of own free shows will have a, a much obliged table. So then much obliged is the name of the group. Awesome. So then how do the yellow balloons come into it? So the yellow balloons again, and this, this goes back to the early days of the war frats. Um, they were just looking for a way to identify one another in a sea of people wearing tie dye. Um, didn't want to stand up with, uh, you know, an AA sign or anything like that. Right. So, right. You know, dude with sign, you know, wasn't a thing <laughs> yeah. that, um, yeah. but, uh, you know, the yellow balloon was just a way to identify, you know, this is where the table is, you know, yellow is a color that is visible from a distance. And mm -hmm. so, um, we owe that to the war frats, the guys who started that. Um, and that has become the universal uh, image for the sober rock and roll, sober music uh, community is the yellow balloons. And so uh, generally, you know, when people talk about the recovery community, they'll, you know, they'll use the war frats, the fellowship or yellow balloons um, as a general overview uh, or a general identifier. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I didn't, I did not know all of that. So yeah. that's very cool. Thank you. So explain you have, you have your tabling at, at a show and, and someone comes up. So what exactly um, do you offer people at the show? Yeah. Great question. So um, I just realized I'm like my dad. I take my glasses off and put them on to <laughs> answer questions. Oh my God. Oh man. Um, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to aging. <laughs> um, so first of all, I think it's important to note that we are not promoting sobriety and we're not telling other people what to do. Um, I have had a lot of fun doing a lot of unsavory uh, things and ingesting plenty of different types of chemicals um, and liquids. Um, at concerts. And so we're not here to tell normal people that they should or shouldn't be doing those things. What we are doing though is saying if you're somebody like me who chooses to not drink and not do drugs at shows, this is a safe environment and there's a group of people here who think and feel similarly. And so the tagline that we say is we provide traction in an otherwise slippery environment. And the idea is, you know, um, when I was starting to think about, uh, you know, not doing drugs anymore and getting sober, um, I was on tour with Fish and, you know, seeing dead shows. And I remember um, I would walk by the fellowship table. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. Um, but I would kind of stand over there and just identify, okay, those are people who are sober and if they can do it tonight, I can do it tonight. And then I'd walk away. And uh, it was actually at Brooklyn, so 2003 or 2004, when Jay-Z, the night that Jay-Z came out with Fish, um, this woman walked over to me. She's like, dude, you've been creeping the table for the last couple of nights, just kind of standing and staring at us like, is everything okay? Are you all right? Do you need anything? And I, I just opened up and I was like, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to stay. So and I talked to her for like 20 minutes, half hour, and we're still friends today. Um, so th that's basically what we do is uh, there's usually two people there. Uh, they have candy and some stickers and uh, they're just there to be a resource for people. Um, a lot of people come up to us uh, and just say hi and say, hey, I've got a a relative who's sober or my friend's sober or my friend needs to get sober or I didn't know you guys existed. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm in recovery and I'm glad that you're here. And, um, you know, I was amazed. I went to uh, New Year's uh, two years ago uh, for to Umphreys and at the tab, four nights at the tab and hanging out at the table there um, and talking to people who had no idea who we were or what we were doing or why we were there. And then them finding out that we were sober and they were sober and just having these connections and conversations, um, you know, 
it's it's pretty amazing it's pretty amazing mm -hmm. um you know and sometimes every once in a while we get somebody who shows up and he's like you know you guys would be a lot cooler with a little bit of acid okay there's always cool. one asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah it happens there's always <laughs> one there's always one uh sometimes yeah. there's a couple uh, yeah. but for the You're most like, part right, bro. <laughs> yeah, for, for the most part um the general um not just the Umphreys community, the fish community, the dead community, the, the general live music community very much embraces, in my experience, very much embraces um, what we have going on because they know that we are a resource for the community um, and we're, we're there to help. And, um, you know, that's, that's what we're there for. That's awesome. I think it's such a beautiful thing. And this, you know, the Umphreys community, but, you know, all the communities are so you know, family driven and belonging. And I think this is awesome to have just another piece of that, another like subset of people that get you and get where you're coming from. And there's no doubt it, it's helped a lot. So since we're all, you know, social distancing anyways, and having to connect like this, how has that been for people in your group? That's a great question. Um, the the community in general, the recovery community in general, I don't want to say especially, but definitely including the the the, the yellow balloon community, uh, has really embraced for the most part the the Zoom uh, idea. So we have uh, we've got a, some fairly very. Let me try that in English this time. We have some fairly active um, Facebook groups. Much Obliged, The Fellowship, The War Frats, um, fairly active on Facebook. Uh, I started a um, Much Obliged um, Instagram account called uh, Ja Junkie. Um, and every once in a while, somebody gets the fact that I added an H there. So it's Ja Junkie, not Ja Junk. Uh, so it's <laughs> J-A-H. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, we were fairly active with social media before. Um, but for the most part we only really saw each other uh when we go to shows so you know whether it's detroit or chicago or cleveland you know i mostly go to midwest shows um that's when i see you know my people um we now have a nightly yellow balloon zoom meeting every night of the week um and we have a, a pretty decent amount of people who join um we're doing twice and that again these are not affiliated with aa or na or anybody else these are also not affiliated with the bands these are autonomous groups um we started twice a week uh, a big book study which is again not affiliated with aa but more relevant specifically to aa um just because i'm not able to do that in my normal weekly schedule i can't do that right now um and we just started uh, tonight will be the first night where we're doing a speaker meeting and these are general meetings that uh, are more in line with what somebody would find either in AA or NA or other recovery related groups. Um, and those communities are doing it, and I say those as if I'm not included, but I am. Um, you know, those the, you can find AA Zoom meetings easily, um, but we're, you know, we're, we're doing that in the Yellow Balloon community because we, like each other <laughs> yes. and so we want to see each other's faces we want to make sure that we're doing well and so um you know the the it's interesting that i'm seeing we talked about this earlier i'm seeing some of my friends more now than i was before um and i posted this on the uh on the junkie instagram that and Facebook, um, you know, this is not social isolation, this is social distancing. So we can't physically be next to each other, but, uh, you know, emotionally, uh, interactively, online, spiritually, like we can be connected and give each other the things that we need so that we can continue to, to, to do this and, and be healthy and grow and succeed. And, you know, isolation sucks for normal people. Mm -hmm. um, isolation in addiction can be death. Um, mm -hmm. and so we don't want that. We want people to, to stay mentally, physically, and spiritually healthy. Um, and so I think as a community, we've really stepped up and, and are, are helping one another. Um, and, uh, you know, Brendan doing the why not 
doesn't hurt, <laughs> you know, getting a little bit of, you know, new live music on the reg is, uh, is mm -hmm. not a bad thing. I mean, we've seen some really wonderful um, music coming up uh, in live feeds, whether it's Trey doing the re recorded stuff, uh, which is awesome. I mean, I think we had five, six new Trey songs. Um, I don't know if you've uh, seen what Reed Mathis is doing. I mean, Reed Mathis has just mm -hmm. opened up a massive amount of, of new music. Um, and some of these are things that, you know, we've seen him play before and some of this is brand new. Um, Keller Williams, love that dude. Um, <laughs> you know, he's been doing some great live streaming, um, mm -hmm. you know, but the guy, you know, Brendan's done some really cool stuff. Joel's doing it. You know, it's great. Mm -hmm. So it is um, great. You know, getting getting some of that uh, you know musical energy has has been good for me. I enjoy it. Oh, absolutely! It's been great for me too. It's it certainly helps. And you know, even their live streams every Monday is, you know, it's like something I'm, you know, schedule it now, and it's yeah, it, it's great. So, how many members of are in Much Obliged right now? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, our Facebook group has about 11,000, 1100, somewhere in between, um, which is a pretty good representation of, um, you know, that group. Uh, the fellowship it has like 6,000 plus. Um, Warfrats is a bigger number. Um, that's just based on the fan base size. Um, you know, I'd say the 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 size of the meeting at the show versus the size of who participates daily uh, in Facebook groups are very different. Mm -hmm. So um, you know the fellowship has a fairly active group on Facebook. The uh, we in Much Blash have a very active Facebook group. Um, you know maybe you have twenty or thirty people who are like regular posters. Uh, in the fellowship, it might be a little bit more than that. Uh, in the war frats, is probably a little bit less than that. Um, but at a at a typical Midwest or or East Coast much obliged table, you'll probably see anywhere from fifteen to thirty people. Detroit, we'll get thirty people. Pretty much every much obliged table in Detroit will have about thirty people ish. Um, you know, you do Atlanta, you do North Carolina you do New York, you'll have, you know, 20, 30 people, you know, uh, Portland, Maine or Portland, Oregon, you'll have four, mm -hmm. you know, um, so, and then, uh, for the fellowship, you probably have, you know, anywhere from 50 to 60 people at a normal fellow show. I, I've been to fellowship meetings where there's a hundred, uh, you know, go to Madison Square Garden, you'll have a hundred, 150 people at a meeting, you know, easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So if someone, you know, you were talking about creeping at the table before somebody approached you. So if somebody doesn't want to take that approach to, uh, you know, kind of putting themselves in there, what is the best way for someone that is seeking help and, you know, maybe wants to become a part of the community? What is the best way for them to do that? So uh, great question. So there's two different answers today versus on a show day. So on a show day, walk up to the table, introduce yourself, say hi. 99 out of 100 table hosts are freaking awesome. Uh, and the one who isn't freaking awesome is just regular awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, they're the, the people who volunteer their time and energy um, are fans who love the music uh, enough to be there and love the community enough to say i'm not going to go stand inside and watch the show i'll stand out here and be a resource so these are these are special people who are really amazing um you know giving giving service uh you know of themselves mm -hmm. so on a normal show day walk up to the table and say hi don't be a don't be an idiot like me or like i was um today if you're struggling if you're out there and you're you know you're you're struggling with recovery uh, or you're not, you're in recovery, you just didn't know about us, join the Facebook group. Caveat, 
if you're a non freeze fan and you're just interested in what we've got going on, but you're not interested in recovery, please don't don't join the Facebook group because we really want to keep that a forgive the language, but we would really want to keep that a safe space, safe space that's mm -hmm. just dedicated for people who are either sober or trying to get sober. And if you're not sober and you're struggling, join. Like we're we're there to help. We've got people who have, you know who are on day one who join um and there's nothing wrong with that uh, that's the beauty of us being at the shows is that if you're in day one you know who we are and you know that we're a resource for you um instagram's a little bit different um you know we do the birthday shout outs uh and we make some funny memes um and so if you want to laugh at good umphrey's content and uh, laugh at some funny uh memes follow us on instagram we're more than happy to have you uh if you don't have facebook and you want to connect with us just through instagram just send us a, a dm um you know and we're, we're happy to have the conversation um but yeah if you're if you're out there you know in doing practicing social distancing and you're you didn't realize that there was a sober live music fan community we are here and we are a resource and we want to talk to you and we want to engage with you we want you to know that you know we're there and uh you know we do, we do some pretty cool stuff in that in that facebook group that's awesome yeah. so tell us all where where we can find everything on social media yeah so um much obliged is the name of the facebook group um the fellowship Warf rats, jellyfish, happy hour heroes. Those are the different, you know, just I said Google those, but search those on Facebook uh, and on Instagram. It's at Jod Junkie, um, and that's J A H J U N K I E. So, um, but yeah, that's the that's the thing. And actually, I want to explain one thing that a number of people have asked me about uh, okay. on Instagram. So. Um, on people's anniversaries, birthday anniversaries, uh, we do a, a meme where I just take their name and I put together some uh, uh, images that represent that and uh, attempt to be funny. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. But um, <laughs> we take their we take their anniversary date um, and we calculate it by twenty three point one six minutes. And we actually made uh, stickers that say twenty three point one six. Uh, 23.16 is the um, time count of the onward and upward from May 3rd, 2014 at the cap, which okay. in my opinion is the greatest version of that song and top 10 Umphrey's jam ever. Um, mm -hmm. That is absolutely epic. Um, I've listened to it many, many times. Um, and I actually use it sometimes to time my run. So a 23 minute run is a perfect amount of time. If I can get in, you know, like three miles, two and a half miles, um, you know, that's uh, that's a good amount of time before I feel like I'm gonna die. So um, <laughs> I never get three miles, that's, that's a fallacy. Uh, but if I can get like two and a half miles, that's great. But 23.16 minutes is, um, is kind of a joke it's become so if you've got five years i'll multiply you know five years divide that by 23.16 and that's how many hall of fame onward and upwards you have um and so uh, people often are like what is it what does that mean what is hof like, why, how, how many is that what is well, that's what it is so when i when if you if you see on our instagram somebody has been sober for that many hof on onward and upwards uh, that's what we're talking about. It's the 23.16 minutes of the May 3rd, 2014 onward and upwards. And if you don't know that song, go check that out. <laughs> go listen to this. Like, yeah, listen to that after you, after we're done here. Definitely yeah, do yeah. that. <laughs> go, and you can watch it on YouTube. It's a great version on YouTube. So. I love that. That's awesome. And I did not know that. So that's great. And I'll be sure to, I'll link that upward in the show notes too, with everything else. So yeah. everybody uh, remembers to check that out. So of course we have to kind of finish it up with talking about Umbreez McGee. Um, you already shared your first show. How many shows have you been to? That's a great question. Um, I stopped counting um, in I think like 2009, 2010, 
when Jen, uh, not Jen, when Fantasy Tour became this like toxic sex, like cesspool of mm -hmm. unpleasantness. And I was like, I don't even want to log in anymore. Um, so I just stopped counting. Um, I try to hit three to five shows a year. So I'm lucky I live in Detroit. So I get two shows at the Fillmore every year. Uh, mm -hmm. Occasionally we get a summer show, you know, uh, but we get a Grand Rapids and a Kalamazoo show and we'll get a Toledo show and a Cleveland show. And, you know, um, on a good year, I'll see five or six shows. Um, knock on wood, I haven't missed a Fillmore Detroit show since they started going there. So, um, you know, I think when I stopped counting in 2009, I'd been to like 40 ish, 45. So, you know, I don't know if, if hit me back, I'll, I'll go back. I'll try to log in and <laughs> try to figure I, it out. You can, you can do your count on all things Umphreys too. Oh yeah. You can like set up an account on all things Umphreys and then it'll give you like all your stats of like the songs you've heard or not heard. Or yeah. all right, it's well, like we'll follow up on that. We'll see if I can, if I can, I, yeah, I, I don't think I've hit a hundred yet, but I should soon. Sounds like you would be pretty close. Yeah. So what is your favorite Umphrey show memory? If you had to choose one. My favorite Umphrey show memory. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I mentioned that my, my daughter, um, Ella has special needs and she spent uh, between like 2015, 2016 and the beginning of 2017, she was in the hospital a lot. Um, uh, I'm giving you more information than you need, forgive me. Uh, no, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, she was in the hospital uh, 19 times in 18 months. Oh my God. And it was um, an average of like 15 to 20 days per stay. So it was a pretty shitty couple of years. Um, and during that time actually, so, uh, Baker's Dozen was right in the middle of that and I was supposed to go to Baker's Dozen and um, I couldn't go because she was in the hospital and I was just feeling shitty. Um, I was just, I felt down and I was talking to my sponsor and he said that I should, I should do a gratitude list, which is something that I've done before, uh, but it wasn't something that I was doing at the time. And um, I, uh, I posted in Much Obliged and I was like, hey guys, I'm going to do a 30 day gratitude list challenge i'm going to post 10 things every day that i'm grateful for and anybody who'd like to join uh you know do it with me and we probably had 25 30 people uh who every day posted 10 things that they're grateful for and at the end of a month that's 300 things that you're grateful for that's pretty awesome uh but it really gave us an opportunity to um really get to know each other really well and really learn a lot about each other and by the way that that gratitude list thing is still happening um and we still post 10 things every day there's a whole bunch of people who do it and you know people come in and out and um you know but uh so i was through that thread i started talking to a couple guys who uh were planning on going to umphreys in uh new year's in atlanta and i was like uh, you know can i can i get away can i do it and I, I, just, I said, you know what, fuck it, I'm buying a plane ticket. And a um, couple of guys, I'd never met them in person. They're all from Alabama. Um, so my buddy uh, Azar and um, my buddy Maddie and Alec, um, they were like, yeah, we're staying in a hotel. I'm like, can I, just, can I just stay with you guys for the weekend? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I flew to Atlanta and uh, spent five days with guys that I'd never met. And... Um, we ate really well. We hung out. We had a great time. We stayed in a in a in a hotel that was a walking distance from the venue, and um, it was five days of respite that I really needed. I, I just got away from you know. It was the first time since my daughter was born that I was able to travel to go see music, um, and it was uh, uh, you know kind of a pivotal moment for me uh, in just seeing that my daughter had gotten somewhat healthier. So. I was able to get away and do that, but uh, those those five days of that um, new, you know New Year's at the Tab 
which if you're looking for great jams, Humphreys put out back at, uh, was it back at the Mac? Uh, yeah. From, from those nights, that, that was awesome. Uh, and that was, that was my, my favorite. Um, those are my favorite, uh, you know, Humphreys memories is, is those couple of days just, you know, kind of getting away from it all and connecting with friends. And I talk to those guys every day, uh, just about, uh, you know, they're good guys. That's very cool. So I've seen videos and we've talked about this too. Talk about your youngest daughter dancing to the triple wide. Yeah. So uh, music is very important to my daughter. Um, she loves it. It's a great way to communicate. Um, it's probably some genetics, you know, uh, she, she loves it. But when she was probably four or five, um, I was listening to Live at the Murat uh, on my computer, and she heard uh, that the beginning of that song where the drums come in, and it's like, you know, I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just picked up her hands and kind of went like that and did the air drums. And I was like, did you just enjoy it? And she just got up and she was, I mean, she was in. And I was like, all right, let's dance. Um, and that day we ended up dancing to that song like three times in a row. Um, and it just became a song that, you know, was her go-to dance song, which <laughs> I've got no problem with. For sure. <laughs> um, but we've used that again, you know, in hospital stays when she's not, um, you know, when she's kind of bumming. And she's pretty incredible. Even when she's not feeling good and in pain and, and uncomfortable, she still has a smile on her face most of the time. Um, but I've got, you know, some videos that, uh, that, that are saved in my phone as favorites where, you know, she's kind of like laying there and not feeling good and just kind of bumming. And I turn that song on and she's like, you know, uh, or she'll, you know, pick up a doll, you know, Big Bird and she'll, you know, she'll dance with Big Bird or dance with Ernie or something like that. And so, um, yeah, most people think of that as an awesome dance song. And, you know, it, it holds a very special place in my heart because it makes my daughter happy and I'm a sucker. I mean, if you make my kid smile, I'm, I'll do anything for you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, not to plug another Umphreys album, but uh, if you want to hear an awesome version of an awesome song uh, live at the Murat, it's a great great version and, and you know um you know it's been like five six years now that we've been you know dancing to that version of that song it's great that's awesome so tell us a way that umphreys has inspired you in your personal life that's a great question a way that umphreys has inspired me in my personal life um You know, a lot of uh, the musicians that we follow are uh, experts at what they do. Um, and a lot of them take themselves really seriously. Um, I had uh, a mentor, a business mentor, who said, uh, we don't, I don't take myself seriously, but I take my business very seriously. And um, I feel like the, the guys from Humphreys really uh, live and breathe that, where mm -hmm. they are they are experts at what they do, uh, but they are also fucking goofballs <laughs> in yeah. their own right. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, how many bass players do you know that would stand up uh, on stage with a uh, Borat swimsuit? <laughs> yeah. um, and how many guitar players do you know who would uh, get up there and put on a goofy mustache? And, um, you know, uh, yeah. they, they, they really engage their fans. Um, and I appreciate that as a fan who gets to take advantage of the interaction that they give us. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some of the band members uh, engage with the fans more than others, but, you know, hey, we're all humans. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I, I don't think that there's anything more that I can ask from those guys um, as far as engaging with our community. When I say our community, I don't mean the sober community, I mean the fan base. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. You know, the last couple of weeks of having Why Not and now, um, you know, the, uh, the, you know, Joel stepping in and now Joel and Ryan are doing the Ask mm -hmm. Us Anything stuff. Like it's, you know, they, 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 so your question, how do they inspire me? They inspire me to, to understand that in my professional life, 
I'm really good at what I do, but don't take myself too seriously. I'm still a fucking human and, you know, yeah. um, you know, be, a, be a human. Yeah, absolutely. So. I like that answer. Okay. So I have one last question for you. All right. Uh, describe Umphreys McGee in three words. Describe Umphreys McGee in three words. Um, so number one is rock. Um, number two is fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> Number three is vibe. Nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, that was a hard one. <laughs> I always like throwing that one in at the end and, yeah. and yeah. seeing what um, people come up with. <laughs> so, so funny story. So um, we have, so we've got friends who are, you know, sober all over the country and we've got this yellow balloon Zoom meeting and a friend of ours from Colorado joined who's not part of the yellow balloon groups but she's sober and she's you know she's awesome and we're in this meeting and everybody there is talking about fish and she's like what is going on here she's like do i have to like fish to be in this group and i'm like you're a rocker don't worry about it we're not going to get you to like fish but we're going to get you to like umphrey she's like oh that sounds awful i'm like listen lady this is good stuff she's like listen i'm a metalhead you got nothing for me and I'm like, actually, actually. <laughs> you say I'm and so I made her a playlist and she's working her way through it. And she said she's having a good time. She's enjoying it. And uh, so we're, we're, we're going to suck another one in. <laughs> it's so easy to do though. It's so easy. Yeah. Like they, they just do it for us. We're just like, just listen to this Yeah. yeah. and then get back to me. Yeah. That's, That's all you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> So actually I put Miss Tinkles on the list for her. I'm like, if you're, if you're into metal, that's, uh, they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, this was wonderful. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for, uh, for putting this together. I appreciate you. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot more about the sober community and, and what you guys do. And I hope that other people learn more about what you guys do and hopefully there's some folks out there that can benefit from having this community. So Absolutely. thank you. We're, thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a good yeah. one. You too.